First one on the medians. Medians. I think we got done with this one, but what you should do to find each median, find the midpoint of each side first. And I'm just going to estimate, if you didn't do it already, just estimate. If you wanted to put tick marks to show that that's a midpoint to help you remember it, that's great. Go right ahead. You take that midpoint, you connect it to the vertex of the opposite side. That's called a median. Midpoint here, connect it to the vertex. That's a median. And again, if you wanted to put tick marks on it, I'm not going to draw all these tick marks and everything. It just takes longer. But if you wanted to do it on your notes there, it might be helpful. Midpoint here goes to there. Those two are congruent. So all three of those are the median. Somebody help me out. What was that point called? Centroid. I'm not going to write that on each one. You know where they, the point of concurrency where they all come together? Centroid. Over here I find the midpoint. Midpoint of that side's about there. Connect it. Why so much chatter? Midpoint's here. Connect it. Midpoint's there. Connect it. <coughs> Centroids right there. All three of the medians. Midpoint. Midpoint. Remember, connect the <coughs> vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. How do you know where the opposite side's at? <coughs> if I'm standing right here on this vertex, how do I know where the opposite side is? The one that if I walk straight out from it, it's where I head, right? So opposite side, you got to be able to find that. What's that point called again one more time? Centroid. Centroid. Everybody has all those drawn in, right? Oops. Thing. There you go, pretty straight on. All lines are straight. <laughs> so you should have just said I can draw a fairly good line. Because it's all lines are good. All lines are straight, no, not all lines are good. <laughs> <laughs> Altitudes. Did we draw in the altitudes last time? Maybe start and didn't get completed. An altitude goes from a vertex. This is where you use your note card. Vertex to the opposite side, and it forms a what? A right angle. Before I do that, I said I was going to write some other stuff. Make sure we wrote this last time. What do you notice about all the centroids? Where they fall at? Inside. So all centroids, might want to write this down somewhere. All centroids are inside the triangle. All centroids are inside the triangle. Centroid can't be anywhere else other than inside the triangle. We talked about the theorem last time. Let's do that real quick while you're writing down that. If I told you this segment from here, from the <coughs> midpoint to the centroid, if I told you it was 5, does anybody remember how long is this segment going to be? 10. Ten. Ten. This segment from the vertex to the centroid is always double the centroid to the midpoint. So remember that theorem also. What were the three words we said always remember? You might want to write this down too. Median, midpoint, Centroid. They always got to go together. Medium, midpoint, centroid. We didn't write that down last time. Let's do it now. Always go together. Anytime you hear one, think of the others. <coughs> Joe's going to help me out. He's going to remind me. Each time on every all four of these, Joe, I want to say something about the words that go together. I want to say something about where they fall. And of course, the point of concurrency. And we're going to draw them in each time. Altitude. Take your note card, line up 
the opposite side. If I'm starting at this vertex, this is the opposite side. Line up that opposite side with one of the sides of the note card. Move it over. Slide it over until you get it to line up with that vertex. Draw in that segment right there. That segment comes down here and it forms what kind of angle at the bottom? Right angle. Now I'm not, I don't want to take all the time to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it on all of them. I want you to do it on all of them, but I'm not going to use my note card on every one of them. So I'm just going to sort of estimate. If I go over here, does that look like about a right angle? If I go from here over, right angle's about there. What's that point called? The point of concurrency for altitudes? Orthocenter. Ortho Make sure you got that down somewhere. Orthocenter. Let's go ahead and write down the words that we should all. Every time you hear the word altitude, what other things should you think of? Right angles. Good. Right angles. Sorry, I abbreviated there. Hopefully, you can know what that is. Orthocenter. Orthocenter. You might even think of 90 degrees. All those go together. Anytime you hear altitude, think of a right angle. Hey, I got a right angle somewhere. So there's an altitude. This next one, this was an acute triangle right here. The first one was an acute triangle. What kind of triangle is this one? Right, first. right triangle. In a right triangle. I draw an altitude from there to there. That looks like about like a right angle. Sorry, I missed my vertex a little bit. What's going to happen when I draw the altitude from this vertex? It's going to go straight down. It's actually one of the sides of the triangle. How about from this vertex? And it's one of the sides of the triangle. So in a right triangle, two sides are also what? Altitudes. Two of the sides are also altitudes. Two of the sides are also altitudes in a right triangle. Where do they all come together? Where's the point of concurrency at? All right there at that right angle. So that's the what again? Orthocenter. Next one, if I draw this, I start at this vertex, go over there, that's a right angle. How am I going to draw a right angle from this one? We talked about this last time. Yeah. Got to extend the opposite side out, so the opposite side is going to come out here, going to come down something like that. How about from this one? Same thing, it's got to come down here, right? Mine's going to go off the screen, so it's going to, the, it's going to come down here. Where's the orthocenter going to be at on this one? Right there. See that point that I put down there? That's where it's at. So orthocenter, orthocenter. What kind of triangle is this? Let's say that first. It's an obtuse triangle. For an obtuse triangle, the orthocenter is where? Outside the triangle. So the other thing that we need to say is where is the orthocenter located for these triangles? The centroid was always inside the triangle. Is the orthocenter always inside the triangle? No. What could we say about the orthocenter? The in, the on, the outside. Orthocenter could be <coughs> in, on, or outside. Triangle. And I know you probably can't read that, so you probably want to listen. Orthocenter could be in the triangle, could be on the triangle, could be outside the triangle. Depends on the triangle. So the orthocenter could fall anywhere. Centroid has to fall where? Inside the triangle somewhere. Orthocenter could fall anywhere. Did the orthocenter have a theorem? No, there wasn't no theorem about the orthocenter. <coughs> How'd that happen? There we go. 
Next one on the other side, is that perpendicular bisector? Is that the first one of your guys' Yeah. Perpendicular bisector. First thing I'm going to say about perpendicular bisector does not have to start at a vertex or a corner. Perpendicular bisector doesn't have to start at a corner. It could start anywhere on, on the, uh, or in relationship to the triangle. Now, for this triangle, because it's equilateral, guess where each one of them is going to start? At a corner. So this one, that's going to be the perpendicular bisector. Remember, a perpendicular bisector does what to this opposite side? Bisects it, so it splits it into two congruent segments. And what do we know about this angle right here? It's a right angle. It's a right angle. Per that's a perpendicular bisector. It does both those things. So each perpendicular bisector you draw is going to do both those things to the side of the triangle that you go to. So I'm going to draw this one. That's a right angle. Those two are congruent. I'm going to draw this one. That's a right angle. Both those two are congruent. Point of concurrency, where they all meet, what's that called? Everybody agree with that? Circumcenter? So to do a perpendicular bisector on this triangle, first thing I'm going to do, and this is what I want you to do, sort of estimate. We want to find the midpoint of this side of the triangle. Midpoint probably where? Somewhere about in there? Does that look right, Devin? Does that look like the midpoint? Probably not. About there. Is that pretty close? Just making sure Devin was awake there. So we got, a perpen or we got our midpoint there. We want a <laughs> perpendicular bisector. If I want to run a segment that's perpendicular to that, is it going to run like that? Is that going to form a right angle? No, it's got to go straight across like that. <coughs> so it's perpendicular to and it bisects that side. <coughs> so that's what you want. You want a segment. If I do this, I want a segment that has a midpoint. Somewhere about in there on that one. Could line this up. It's going to go somewhere about like that. <coughs> I don't know why I put a point there. Sorry, I shouldn't have. You want it to line up with that perpendicular bisector. Looks like midpoint's about right there. Perpendicular bisector is going to run. <coughs> it's horrible. Something about like that. Uh, ignore all the stray marks. What's that point right there where they all meet called? Circumcenter. For a right triangle, if my if I could have drawn mine right, guess where that circumcenter should fall? On the hypotenuse of that right triangle. It should fall on that, that side of that right triangle. Next one, perpendicular bisector of this. I find the midpoint. These are a little harder, so you gotta make sure you understand what we're doing. Find the midpoint. We want a segment that hits that midpoint and is perpendicular to it. So segment's going to run something about like that. That's going to be the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Notice it's just some stray line or segment in that triangle. It's not anywhere special. It just hits that side and it's perpendicular to it and it bisects it. Same thing down here. I find the midpoint somewhere about in there. We want to be perpendicular to that. It's probably going to run somewhere straight down like that. Puts that one into two congruent segments and it makes a right angle with the side. Next one, midpoint. Does that look like about the midpoint? It's so sort of hard for me to see up here. Is that pretty close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's our midpoint. We want to come in, we want to hit that at a right angle. Does that look like, eh, ignore that. Does that look like about a right angle? Hard for me to see up here. That's probably a little off. Now, if we extended those out, somewhere out here, if I could draw 
straight somewhere out there. All three of those are going to come together, and what's that point going to be called? That's the circumcenter. Somewhere outside that triangle is going to be the circumcenter. What three words? What are we going to put together? Actually, it's more than three this time. Perpendicular, <coughs> bisector. Anytime you hear perpendicular, bisector, what else are you going to think of? Circumcenter. Circumcenter. Right angles. Right angle. And this one actually has a, an extra one. What happens to the segments when you have a perpendicular? Congruent segment. You bisect in the segment, so you got to have <coughs> congruent segments somewhere on there. So perpendicular bisector tells you a whole bunch of information. <coughs> Where do the perpendicular bisectors fall? Inside, outside, on the circle, which one? All of them. So perpendicular bisector could be in. Did I say circle a second ago? Did I? Right. In the triangle, <coughs> on the triangle, or outside the triangle. Perpendicular bias, or the uh, circumcenter could be, not perpendicular bisector, that should be circumcenter. Circumcenter could be any of those three. <coughs> circumcenter could be inside, outside, or on the triangle. had a theorem about the circumcenter. I'm going to erase this real quick. Our circumcenter for this triangle was somewhere about in there, right? What did the theorem say? What's true about that circumcenter, wherever that point's located? It's the same distance from the vertices, the, vertices, the corners. So that circumcenter if you drew your circumcenters on your triangles like you were supposed to there a second ago, you should be able to take that ruler and you should be able to measure from here to there, here to there, and here to there, and what should be true about all three of those links? They should all be the same. Our circumcenter came out to be somewhere like up in here on this one, right? What should be true about the distance from here to that corner? here to that corner and here to that corner. <coughs> they better be the same. Look at my segments. Do they look like they're about the same lengths? Pretty close, right? Aiden's amazed at how well I draw all that art. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Aiden. Let's see if I can try to boost your confidence. Angle bisector. What's an angle bisector do? We will have another quiz like that last one, and if you didn't score as well as you thought you should on it, angle bisector, perpendicular, all that <coughs> stuff, it's supposed to be known. So tell me what an angle bisector is. <coughs> Splits an angle into two congruent angles. So that's all I want you to do. You're going to start at some vertex, and you're going to draw in a segment that splits that angle into two equal angles or two congruent angles. So maybe something like that. I know that that angle is congruent to that angle or something pretty close. Doesn't have to be exact. If you want to put the arcs in there to show that the angles are congruent so you know what you're looking at even if your drawing's not the greatest, then do it. all the angles, you're going to bisect every angle on this picture, on all three triangles. <coughs> so we know those two angles are congruent. Bisect this angle. Mine looks not too good, but we know those two angles are congruent. The point of concurrency where they all come together, what's it called? End center. center. Good. The end center. The point where they all come together is the end center. You're going to bisect each one of these angles on all these triangles. So just go through and do it real quick. 
Looks like that's, those two are about congruent. If I split this angle up, somewhere about there, split this angle up. Boy, that was not too good. That should be our end center right there. Bisect this angle, bisect this angle, split it in half. <coughs> bisect this angle, split it in half. Wow. Cover up my mess up there. The end center is going to be somewhere about in there. Hopefully, your drawing's a little better than mine. I have angle bisector. What other terms should I think of when I hear angle bisector? Congruent what? Congruent angles. I had at least one person on the quiz put an angle bisector splits a segment into congruent segments. And that confused me. Because if you're bisecting an angle, are you going to get segments back when you're done? No, if you're bisecting an angle, you're going to get back angles. <coughs> So we got angle bisector, congruent angles. What other words should I think of? In center, good. So all those go together. Anytime you hear one of those, think of the other two. Angle bisector. Thanks for telling me. Bisector. No, bisector. They're all usually Joe's right on that. You missed it that time, Joe. Had a chance to make fun of my spelling. In center, so if I say this is the in center of the triangle, what do you know is happening to the angles? The angles are being split into two congruent angles, being bisected. What do you notice about the in center? <coughs> in center is always inside the triangle. In center is always inside the triangle. Just like with the, what was the other one that was always inside? Median, the centroid, right? So centroid's always inside, the end center's always inside. What was the theorem? What was the theorem for the end center? All right, so let's look at that real quick. Try to remember, Aiden, you got that point there, so I can, I'm going to erase all this. So right about there. So if that's our end center for this triangle, if that's our end center for this triangle, oh, did we not get it written down last time? So I'll write it up here. If you didn't get that theorem written down last time, write it down. End center is equidistance. What's equidistance mean as I'm writing it out? Same distance from the sides of the triangle. So the circumcenter was the same distance from the corners. The end center is the same distance from the sides. How am I going to find the distance? If there's three of us standing here on this point, how am I going to find the distance that I have to walk from here to get to this side? Am I going to walk like that? You want to, is it right to the vertex? How do I find the distance to this side right here? Oh, straight. You want to make a right angle. So it's got to come over here and it's got to form a right angle. Somebody else is standing here and they want to walk to this side. Am I going to have them walk like down there? No, they're going to walk so that they form a right angle. How's the third person going to walk to get to this side? They're going to form a right angle. Guess what's true about all three of those distances? They all got to be the same. They all got to be the same. Where was the end center at on this one? Somewhere about in there, is that about right? Yeah, it might be a little higher than that. <coughs> Mine was way off, wasn't it? What's going to be true about that distance, that distance, and that distance? They all three got to be the same. So the end center is the same distance from the sides, the perpendicular bisector of the circumcenter, same distance from the corners. They're sort of opposites of each other. <coughs> right, 
the worksheet. Get that, put that, your notes, put them where they belong real quick. I'll give you a second to do that. Make sure they're in your binder somewhere. Don't lose them. Don't lose them, right? Get out the worksheet. We're going to do the worksheet together. John's going to make sure that he's up and focused because what I'm going to do on the worksheet, I have the problems on the board, but I don't have them all drawn out, so I'm going to go around the room. And you're going to have to tell me <coughs> some of the information. All right? Everybody understand that? So get the worksheet out. They follow along. And make sure you're ready to tell me information when I call on you. So on the first one, I'm going to try to call on everybody, but I'm not going to go in any certain order. You should be making sure that you're writing down stuff. Uh, first one, somebody help me out. tell us that EG <coughs> is a what? Median. median. What's a median do to in the triangle? Splits it into, splits a segment into two congruent segments. So what do we know about those two segments? <coughs> what equation can I set up? <coughs> Write that down, start to solve it on your paper there. I'm going to solve it up here. You're not sure what step to do next? Look at my steps. We're going to move extremely quickly, so you got to write quickly. Oops. That's 17. What they ask us to find on number one? X, just find X. So what's our answer? Did everybody get 9? X equals 9. <coughs> Might want to have out your calculators. In case Colin didn't know that 18 divided by 2 is 9, so he can do it on his calculator. <coughs> Number 2, has everybody got that one? X equals 9, that's the first answer. Number 2, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey, help me out with number 2. Tell me the letters again. You can't talk. Shh. R. So we have that. They tell us again that this is a median. Same kind of problem. What equation am I going to set up? What do I know about these two segments? This is a median. Median comes down here and it bisects this. So those two have to be equal. So tell me the equation. It's 
Start to solve that. 2x <coughs> plus 24 equals 5x minus 30. Start to solve it. <coughs> Again, if you're not sure about a step, look up here. I'm doing the steps up here. Have your calculators out to help me here in a second because I can't do this in my head. Divide both sides by 3. X equals what? 18. Does everybody agree with that? As soon as you know it's a median, what's it do to the opposite side? Splits it into two equal segments, bisects it, median. Every time you hear that word median, tell me what, what's the name of point U right there? It's a what? It's a bisector, that's true. Give me a simpler word. Midpoint, thank you. Median, midpoint, congruent segments, all that stuff goes together. Next, <coughs> number three, angle bisector. They tell us that this is an angle bisector. Uh, let's see, Devin, tell me the letters on number three. B? Yep. Let's see. D. D there? Yeah. Sorry, I switched on you. This is an angle bisector. What do I know about these two angles right here? they got to be congruent. So I could mark those. If those two angles are congruent, any point that falls, we had this theorem a while back, any point that falls on that angle bisector, what do we know about these two distances? they got to be equal. So tell me the equation we could set up. 2x plus 6 equals 4x minus 1. Those two have to be a thing. Start to solve that. <coughs> Somebody gets it solved early, tell me if they ask us to find x or if they want us to find something else this time. Just find x. Oh, they want us to find two things? So we're going to have two answers. I got, I'm not sure if my answer is right, I'm going to act like you guys. I got x equals 3.5 or 3.5. Now, that's not all our answer. We want EF. <coughs> oh, Devin didn't do his whole job, did he? Because I probably didn't ask him. EF. That's right. It's the 4x minus 1. Oh, so there's some points here? Yeah. Ah, Devin didn't tell me that. What's this letter? G. G. This letter? F. E. So we're trying to find just that right there? Yeah. So what do I plug in for that? <coughs> so EF equals... 4 times 3.5 minus 1. Somebody do all that for me. 13? That should say EF equals 13. So we had two answers there. Had to find segment EF and find X. Number 4. Tristan, tell me the letters on number 4. K is here? Yes. Is there any other letters? Don't pull a Devin on me and leave me hanging out there and not tell me those other letters are on there. Thanks a lot, Devin. It made me look silly. If we have an altitude, what's the words that go along with an altitude? As soon as you hear altitude, you should think of what? Ortho center and right angles. Right angle. So what do I know about this angle right down here? Right it's got to be a right angle. If that's a right angle, what's this angle on this other side? Right. A right angle. If that's a right angle, what equation can I set up right there? 3x plus 3 has to equal 90. This is one. I like throwing ones like this on the test because it's easy, but it confuses everybody because <coughs> we were doing this, setting these two equal to each other. Guess what I'm going to get on the test? 3x plus 3 <coughs> equals x plus 8. Should those two be equal? 
matter of fact, there's no way they can be equal because one of them's an angle and one of them's a segment. All right? It's like saying Sam is equal to Caitlin. Doesn't make sense, does it? Same thing here. Solve that. 3x equals, what is that, 87? Divide by 3. Somebody help me out. 29. Anybody else get that? Is that what they ask us to find on number 4? Is x is and what? Ij. Ij. So we want to find, did I miss something on it? Oh, I did, didn't I? It's x minus 9 there. Didn't have it written in like I should have. So we want to find this whole segment. How are we going to find that whole segment? <coughs> Plug that in, right? So instead of x, what are we going to stick in there? 29. Is there something wrong? Or are we doing something wrong? What's 29 plus 8? 37 there. 29 minus 9? 20. How are we going to find that whole thing? 29 plus 20, what's that give us? Or 37, not 29. 37 plus 20? 57. That's our other answer. So you got ij equals 57, x equals 29. That's what happens when you start rushing. Raven's back here thinking, you're not going fast enough because this is so simple. Shelby, tell me the letters on this one. That's M. M. Q. N. R. L. Oh, okay. That one? Between N and R. Just kidding. Okay, go back to where you were at. The 2Z. <coughs> the end of the 2Z is P. That's P in the middle? No. no. <laughs> That's outside. There. And then. Yeah, the 2A. Okay, 2A. Let's start over. M, Q, N, R, L. To the right of oh, that. Oh, the point oh. In the middle of 2.8. Other way. Triangle that has 2.8. 2.8. There you go. Yeah, that's B. Now, we went through all that. All of that means that point right there. Does it matter which one of those spaces we put it in? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we have all that. What do they ask us to find on this one? Just X, Y, and Z? Find X, Y, and Z. So find X, Y, and Z, and is each one of those a different one? It's like 5X, is that right? Yeah. 6 is Y, and 7 is Z, the answer. Yeah. So we're looking for those three. What else do they tell us? <laughs> Shelby, what else do they tell us? Because I didn't write down my directions on these. Um, P, Q, and R are the midpoints of <coughs> the segment of... P, Q, and R, those three are midpoints. If those three are midpoints, what kind of segment is that right there? We've got a special name for it. What is it? It's a bisector, that's true. Give me something else, something that we've been covering. Median. median. That's a median. Midpoint. What's this one? Median. median. What's this one? Median. So those are all three medians. Somebody tell me the special name of that elusive point B there that was giving us so much trouble. It's a centroid. So we know that that's a centroid. If that's a centroid, we had a theorem that said the distance from the vertex to the centroid and how it relates the distance from the centroid to the midpoint. This part should be twice as long as that part. So what's this right here? Four. Uh, if this is, did I forget a letter somewhere? Oh no, Y is up there, alright. If this is 3.6, what's this? It's half of that, which is what? Divided. Grab your calculator. Thank you. Y plus 1 is meant for that right there. Oh, Y plus 1 is supposed to be there? Yeah, it has a. Ah, so I messed that up too, didn't I? <coughs> So that's supposed to be y plus 1. So we'll go back to that here in a second. What do we know about this 2z? Is it the same as that? 2z should be what? Half as much as that, right? So how could we find 2z? How could we find z at? We could do what to this length? 
We could double it to get to that, right? Or we could do what to this? Cut that into half, and that would tell us this length. So we could say 2z equals whatever half of this is. What is half of that? 1.4. How do we find z then? Divide by 2. We're going to do several of these that are like this, and I know it's confusing. You need to either take this part and double it to set it equal to that part, or take that part and take half of it and set it equal to this. You got to be able to think that through in your head. What's z equal then? 0.7. So that's one of our answers. That was number 7. We already found x. What was x? 4. That was pretty easy one, right? And the y plus 1 that I have in the wrong place is supposed to go here. So what do we know about that y plus 1? It should equal what? 1.8. <coughs> How do I solve that? Subtract one, subtraction, subtract one. What, what's that give you? 1.8. So again, if they give you something like this where the 2z is here, this distance should be half as long as that distance. So we could take half of this and set it equal to the 2z, or we could take the 2z and double it. What is 2z doubled? 4z. So 4z should equal 2.8. If I divide by 4, well, I'm hoping this comes out the same as our z came out the other way. Otherwise, I'm going to look real silly. What's 2.8 divided by 4? 0.7. Is that what we had? So either way, whichever way is easiest for you or whichever way is easiest for that certain problem. Next one, uh, somebody help me out and uh, read me the things here. All right, Brandon, read me all the, the points. I got, I got P, Q, and R. Is that all the points? That's all of them? And then they got lines A, B, and C. Remember, with lines, how many letters to name a line? Should take two letters unless what? The lowercase letter out at the end of the line. All right, so don't forget that. So that's all the, I didn't leave anything off of this one. Somebody tell me, point A right there. If these are all perpendicular bisectors, if these lines are perpendicular bisectors, point A is called what? Circumcenter? Yeah. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. I thought it was orthocenter. It's circumcenter? It's circumcenter? Yes. <laughs> orthocenter is for altitude? Yes, All right. So it's a circumcenter? <coughs> That's the circumcenter. We had a theorem about the circumcenter that said the circumcenter is the same distance from the vertices, all three corners. So all these red segments that I have in here. What do we know about all three of them? They're all equal. They're all congruent to each other. So tell me an equation I could set up. 5y minus 6. <coughs> Selby, before you do that, give me a dumb equation, that one I wouldn't want to set up so we can show everybody. 5y minus 6 equals 8x plus 16. We can't do anything with that. How come? It's got two different variables in it. So is that the equation that we want? No, it's a good equation, it's true, but it's just too difficult for us to do right now. So what equation could I set up again, Shelby? 5y minus 6 equals 5y minus 6 equals 24. Somebody give me another equation that I could set up. 8x plus 16 equals 24. Somebody solve that one, I'm going to solve this one. So solve for y over there. Uh, we got 8x equals 8. Uh -huh, I picked the easy one. 8 divided by 8. x equals 1. 6. What's y equal? 6. Everybody agree, oops, everybody agree with that? y equals 6? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
They also ask us to find what else? Z. I didn't even see the Z. Oh, there it is. How are we going to find Z? Seven Z plus four equals eighteen. Things you got to not forget. If this is a perpendicular bisector, it comes down to that side and it forms a right angle, and it also does what to that side of the triangle? Puts it into two congruent segments. So those two should be equal to each other. If we solve that one. Seven Z equals fourteen. What's Z equal to? Is that what they asked us to find on this one? Was X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Those are those separate problems. Which one is <coughs> eight is X, I'm guessing. Yeah. So that's number eight right there. Y is nine. That's number nine. Z is ten. And Sam's thinking right now, Z is not ten. What was Z? Two. Make sure you're getting all these down. Again, it will be collected. Next one, 11 through 14. 11 through 14. Levi. I got all the letters this time, so what didn't I put in here, Levi? Is there stuff on the picture that I missed? Is that everything? Was there something else in the directions that I don't have? <coughs> there has to be something. So tell me what the question tells us. Find x if dp equals 4x minus 3 and cp equals 3. Is that right? Yeah. Is this number 11? Yeah. So well, that's x, right? <laughs> We're looking for about number 12, Levi, what's it say? Find y if AP equals 6. If Find y if AP equals y and E P equals 18. 18? Yeah. So we're finding y there on number 12. What's 13 ask us? Find z if F D equals 5z plus 10 and B P. BP equals 42. So that's Z we're looking for on that one. We'll come back to 14 here in a minute, Levi. So let's <coughs> go back to number 11. We're trying to find X. What do you know about if these are all medians? They tell us that these three are medians. <coughs> what do we know about segment DP and how it relates to segment PC? So this is half of that. So what equation could we set up? Be careful. Uh, 4x minus 3 equals 15. Very good. 4x minus 3 should equal 15. 4x minus 3 should equal 15. Solve that. 4x equals, was that 18? Somebody help me out. What's 18 divided by 4? 4.5. So that's x. x equals 4.5. <coughs> For y, we looked at the equation that deals with y. This one's, this one's a little simpler. <coughs> this should be what in relationship to that? Half of it. So if this is half of what y is, then how much is y going to have to be? 36. Everybody agree with that? Not 9? Because the y's got to be doubled, right? So that one there is just 36. This one, this segment should be half as long as this segment. So what equation could we set up there? 5z plus 10 equals, and what Sam did was he took half of this, because half this length should equal that, right? Now maybe somebody else wanted to double this to get it set equal to 42. Would that have been all right also? Yeah. This is probably the easier way. You're laughing, Sam. Wasn't that you? <coughs> oh, it was Levi. 
my fault, Levi. You added to the No. That should be 11 there, should it? <coughs> Thank you. What's 11 divided by 5? 2.2. I agree with that answer. I didn't mess anything else up, did I? What's 14 say, Levi? If the measure of angle of ABC, A, ABC, that's this whole angle right here, equals X, and the measure of BAC equals <coughs> B, B, AC, that's this whole angle, equals the measure of BCA. So that one is congruent to this one, okay? <coughs> Equals at 2x minus 10. So that's 2x minus 10. Wow, they're just trying to confuse us here, aren't they? If, if that one's 2x minus 10, what's this one down here? 2x minus 10. 2x minus 10, so let's stick that in there. Can we set up an equation? Now everybody's looking back at 11 here and saying, well, we already found x. Does that x go with the problem the same as the x in 14? No. What do we know about the three angles of a triangle? <coughs> they add up to 180. Let's collect like terms before I start writing down this equation. How many x's do we have? There's no other It's a yes or no question. Oh, it's a yes or no? Yeah. What's it say? Oh, okay. What kind of tri so? What kind of tri let's do this in? What kind of triangle is this? It's an isosceles triangle. If this is an isosceles triangle, and you draw in this median right here, we already know that that's a median, so it splits that into two congruent sides. What they're asking is, does that also come down here and form a right angle? Yeah, it is. All right, so if you have what they're trying to show you, if you have an isosceles triangle and you draw in a median from the vertex angle, not only is that going to be a median, guess what it's going to do to this angle up top here? It's going to bisect it, and down here at the bottom, it's going to form right angles. So not only is it going to be a median, it's also going to be an altitude. It's also going to be an angle bisector. It's also going to be a perpendicular bisector if it's drawn from there. Now, does this one... Is that an altitude, a perpendicular bisector? No, only the one from the vertex angle. If you look back at your notes, what did you notice about the first picture in every single one of those? They were all equilateral, right? And what was true about all the pictures you drew on that set of notes? The first picture on all of them where you drew in the segments, all the same, because it happened to be equilateral. So this answer is just yes? Explain it. Eh, forget that. We ain't got time. Problem 15. John, help me out. Problem 15. It must be something that I didn't write down here. It looks like I have the, the points. What didn't I write, John? That's all So it's sort of the same thing, right? So tell me what it says in the problem, John. Oh, slow down, slow down. Rx, R to X, that's from here to here, is how much? X plus 7. X plus 7. So that distance from there to there is X plus 7. What else they say, John? S, X equals 3 minus 11. 3X minus 11. Is that right? And they tell us that <coughs> Px there is a what? It's a median. If that's a median, what should be true about those two segments John just told us about? It should be congruent. So what equation can I set up? 3x minus 11 plus 3x minus 11 should equal x plus 7. <coughs> we solve that. Solve it real quick there on your paper. 2x minus 11 equals 7. <coughs> X equals what? That was you that time, right, Sam? 
Is that what they asked us to find was X? They said find the length of RS, which is this whole bottom segment. How am I going to find that? Plug in. Do I have to plug into both spots? I plug in right here, what's 9 plus 7? 16, so that segment over there is 16. What's this one over here then? 16, because they got to be the same. How long is RS then? 32. Number 16. Tell me out, Aiden, what's number 16? How is it different? Um, find RT if RT equals X minus 6. So this is, this time they're saying that's X minus 6. Ignore the other junk that we got here because this time it doesn't, doesn't fit. Measure of angle PTR equals what? 8x minus 6. So PTR. PTR. That's that angle right there. 8x minus 6. Another one that's going to confuse a lot of people. What equation can I set up there? Can I say 8x minus 6 equals x minus 6? We know that this segment, they also, they tell segment PT is a what? Altitude. altitude. That's an altitude. As soon as you hear the word altitude, you should think of what kind of angle. Right. So that angle right there has got to be a right angle. It's 90 degrees. So 8x minus 6 should equal how much? 90. Solve that. Is my other calculator out help me? 8x equals 96. What's x equal? They didn't ask us to find that, I don't think, did they? They asked us to find the length of segment <coughs> RT. Well, they told us RT down here was an X minus 6, so what are we going to put in place of X right there? It's 12 minus 6. Yeah, I had another slide for that one. Didn't know that. 17, real quick. Nabucco wants to construct a mobile. Does everybody know what a mobile is? Maverick still, mommy still got one hanging above his bed. Mobile keeps him, so when he's trying to lay down to go to sleep, he's not crying and fussing. He, he watches the mobile go around, helps you sleep. Brandon, you still got one too? I was thinking about mobile or something like that. You got one mobile. Out of triangles, so that the surfaces of the triangles hang parallel to the floor when the mobile is suspended. How can the buco be certain that uh, she hangs the triangles to achieve this effect? So she wants to hang this triangle up. I can't do it with my triangles because they're too flimsy. But she wants it to hang up there so it's like this. Not like this, not like this. She wants it to hang this way so that the baby can see as much of the triangle as possible as it's going around. How is she going to do that? Just guess. Just guess? Put it in there somewhere? If I actually have a decent triangle. I did have some up here somewhere. If I had this triangle, so I just guess and I start poking holes in it and sticking the string through it and say, okay, yeah, right about there, that looks about right. Is that going to work? No. Let's take this triangle. I think I can do it with this one. Maybe not. We'll see. If it's going to hang to the floor parallel, what should I be able to do on the end of my pin here? I should be able to balance it. Anybody have a guess what point that's going to be? It's going to be the centroid. And that's what you need to write down on that question. Previous. Find the centroid. Something you might want to keep in mind, something you might want to write in your notes somewhere. Find the centroid. The centroid, if you ask somebody down in the, one of the science classes, what is a centroid, they probably won't have a clue. But if you ask them this, what is the name of it. So I'm not a science teacher. I'll think of it. So we'll come back to that. I'll think of it. What is it? 
it, it's going to make it so that I can take this triangle, <coughs> if I find the centroid, and it'll balance right there on top of that pin. That's the centroid. Is it going to work for the circumcenter or the end center? No, <coughs> centroid's the only one that's going to work. Now I remember. Centroid's also called, just took that second. Center of gravity. gravity. Center of gravity. Centroid. In math class, point's called centroid. In science class, it's called the center of gravity. Eighteen. That's a median. That's a median. What do we know about those two segments? <laughs> So 6x plus 3 should equal what? So next minus 1. Let's go through this real quick. Somebody solve and find x for me there. What is it? 4. Everybody agree with that? Next one, they tell us these are mid, all midpoints. If those are midpoints, give me a special name for that point right there in the middle. Centroid again. If that's a centroid, what do I know about these two parts? They're equal, so what's y going to equal? 5. So 3y should equal 15. 3y equals 15. You divide by 3, y equals 5. They tell us something else. All they told us, I guess I do need it. Where's uh, a at? That one? What's this one? B up here? They tell us that CB, this length, is the same as that length. <coughs> What's that tell you about all four of these little segments then? They're all four congruent. So what equation could I set up to find X? Because all four of those, 9X plus 6, all four of those should be congruent. <coughs> so what's X equal? Six. Is that all they ask us to find was x and y on that one? <coughs> find the value of x and y? Yeah. Next one, all three of these are congruent. That's what they tell us. All three of those are congruent. If this is a median, what should be true about these two? They should be congruent anyway. We could set up the equation. Just Write this down, Mr. Eversole on number 20. Write that on as your answer. I'll give you that one. 21. Spell my name wrong, John. John, do I care if you spelled it wrong? No. I'm not sure why Michael's so worried. I looked at this one. They tell us, what do they tell us on 21? <laughs> they don't tell us anything? They didn't tell us those segments or anything special or nothing though? They tell us that D, E, and F are what? Is that the wrong one? 21 doesn't have anything? Oh, that goes up to 19, doesn't it? It does have some markings on it though, doesn't it? has those congruent markings that I have. So what's this point right here? It's a what? Midpoint, what's this point? Midpoint, what's this point? Midpoint, if all three of those are midpoints, what's that point right there? It's a centroid, what's this segment called? Median, what's this segment called? Median, median. What do you know about how this distance from here to there relates to that one? It's half of it. So let's find, let's do that one first since I pointed it out. 3z should equal half of this, so 3z should equal how much? 12, so what's z equal? 4, divide by 3 on both sides. Give me another one that we could find. This is a lower. Yeah, that's 2x12. What's 6? 3z is supposed to be 6z. Oh, this says 6z? Really? That's supposed to be a 6Z. I messed up completely, didn't I? 
So what's z equal? z equals 2, my fault. z equals 2. What should be true here about these two segments? 2x should be double the 12, so what should 2x equal? 24. What's x equal? I didn't mess up that one, did I? What should be true here? This one should be double that, right? So 3y plus 5 should equal what? 20, good. I didn't mess up this one, did I? So 3y equals 15. What's y equal? 5. Is that all they ask us find on 21 was x, y, and z? Centroid. I'm guessing D is in the middle here. Is that right? That's a centroid. Same idea on this one. Let's go through this real quick. What do you know about these two segments? Explain it to me. 6x is half as much as 24. So tell me an equation we could set up from that. 6x equals 12. What's x equal? What is it? 2 divide. How about this one? The y's. 8y equals 32. Half of 32. So 8y equals what? 16. Divide by 8. What's y equal? 2. They're always 2, right? Every answer is 2. No. Next one, a little tougher on this one. Watch closely, because I can tell Maverick's got that confused look in his eyes because he thinks, okay, I gotta think, and this is half of that, and this is this is double that, and that's all oh, that's confusing. And I understand it's confusing. I gotta stop and think about it every time too. Here, what do we know about this segment? Half of this one. This one is twice as much as, as that one, right? So what would we have to do to this one? Double it. What is 6z doubled? So 12z should equal what? 9z plus 6. If we double that, we should get that. We could also have took half of this and set it equal to that 6z. Either way. Subtract 9z. End up with 3z equals... 6, what's z equal? <coughs> I told you they were always 2. Aiden didn't believe me. Next one, this is a centroid. This one should be easier. That's a centroid. We're trying to find x, y, and z. They tell us that, uh, somebody help me out, where is segment TP? Tell me the Top length one. of this segment. Let's go this route. The whole thing is 24. The whole thing is 24. That whole thing is 24. So let's remember that. That's RN then. How about this segment? Do they tell us that length? Is that just this part? That's the whole thing? So that whole thing there is 18. That whole thing is 24. I'm guessing they tell us the whole thing on this other one. What is it? 15. Oh, that makes it a lot harder. I thought this was going to be easy. How can we find y? Or let's do x first. How can we find x? This whole thing is 18. This is the way I do it, and whether you can do it this way or not, that's up to you. I look at the number that they tell me the whole segment is, and I try to split it up into threes, three parts. Will 18 split up evenly into three parts? 
6 and 6 and 6, right? So when we're looking at that, this little short part is a third of that, or one of those parts. This part is two of those parts. So how much is this part going to be? 6. How much is this part going to be? 12. What's x? 6. Let's find y next. This whole thing is 15. Can we split the 15 up into three parts? 5, 5, and 5. So this part right here is how much? 5. This part over here is 10. It's two of those parts. If that confuses Brandon to no end, and he doesn't want to do it that way, that's just the way that Mr. Eversole does it, because that's how his head works. If he wants to do it a different way, this is the other way you could do it. This whole thing is 24. You could grab your calculator and remember the theorem. The theorem says this part has to be a third of the whole length, so one third times 24. Grab your calculator, what's a third times 24? Eight. So Z is eight. This part over here would have to be two thirds times 24. You grab your calculator, what's two thirds times 24? 16. All right, so either one of those, however you can remember to do it, that's what you're looking at if they give you the whole length and not the parts. Next one, 24, real quick, what kind of triangle uh, are the median and angle bisectors the exact same segments? All of them, close. Look back at your notes. That first triangle on all four things that we did, was the equilateral triangle, correct? Yeah. If you look back at your notes and try to match them up, that first triangle should look the exactly the same, everything you drew. So equilateral, equilateral, equilateral triangle. Next one, for what kind of triangle is the centroid outside the triangle? Joe says none. Obtuse, acute, obtuse. Which one are we going with? None. None? none? Yes. We got Joe, we got Caitlin saying none. <laughs> Let's vote. Obtuse, raise your hands. <laughs> There's two of you. Levi's not sure back here, he's sort of giving up. Acute, raise your hands. That's one. I see it today. Don't try to lie to me. None. We got one, two, three. There's three of those, so since the rest of you two picking the boat, we're going with none. Centroid never falls outside the triangle. That's one of the things we said in the notes. Centroid never falls outside the triangle. Make sure your names are on those, and you're going to lay them on that blue chair right there. Lay them on the blue chair. Put your rulers, protractors, and stuff back in the back. What's the assignment? Nothing. Don't have an assignment. <laughs> 